Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Yes, yeah, Christian here, 2019 European and National Aquathlon Champion in my age group. And if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. So on to what I'm going to discuss today. Today I will be discussing my go-to sessions which would help you with your PBs in running. <laughs> the video guys so today I'm going to discuss my go-to sessions um, and key sessions that um, can get you a PB whether it's 5k 10k or even uh, 10 miles or even up to half marathon um, distance they can help you with your PB so I'm just gonna go through some key sessions that I do and ones that I love and um, the benefits for you and the purpose so my firstly, my first key sessions is mile reps. So you should do mile reps regularly. Now the reason, the benefit for this is endurance for speed, also being able to maintain speed for long distance and also it keeps you in that heart rate higher zone for quite a while. So mile reps, um, you can have any sort of structure. So it could be like a one mile warm up and then you can have um, two, three mile reps um, as a normal session. Now with the sessions, um, with the, well, with the recovery, you can have three minutes recovery or even five minutes recovery per rep in between and then target the reps, um, the mile reps. Now, you, it depends what kind of pace you wanna do them. So the way I do them, I normally start a bit slower. So I start off at 10K pace and I try and finish at 5K, uh, sorry, 5K pace or faster at the end of um, um, the last rep. Now with this session, it's what it's my it is my favourite session to go um, go back to and do. And, and um, now with this, you have to be quite disciplined. Now you can do it a wide range of things. Like I normally do uh, with three minutes recovery per rep, and I, I have gone up to when I was training for half marathon. I have gone up to eight miles um, in reps, so eight eight reps. Um, so I'd say if you are thinking of doing that, build up. Now I found that was very helpful for half marathon for sure because what I found was that I was able to keep the same consistent pace throughout the half marathon. Now I, the first six miles I did pace it and then the, the, the next six mile, well the, um, the rest of it was um, very, uh, was a lot uh, faster and um, I was running the last mile faster than I run the first mile. So it's good for keeping consistent pace and maintain the pace for a long time. But the other thing is that um, it sometimes makes you static on a certain pace. So you need to obviously do other sessions. Now this is my favorite session, as I mentioned, and um, there's you just build up slowly to it and make sure you have a warm down afterwards. So I always do three minutes uh, recovery between the rep. Um, sometimes four, but then I um, build up. So each week or every couple of weeks, I might add on an extra mile rep onto it. Um, and the best place to do that, you can do that on the track or you can do that, of course, anywhere you want because your watch can just measure it. So that's the first, um, the first session that I really like. Now, the next session I really like is 400 meter reps. It's a fantastic session to do. And not only does it um, get that heart rate max going, um, if you give it your all, it also gives you the, the cadence is far um, running cadence so you can improve running cadence. Therefore, you can turn over quicker and therefore you can go faster in your training and races. And plus, um, you're working hard. So um, you get that VO2 max um, higher as well. So although you've got the mile reps that help your VO2 max as well, the 400s um well, with the 400s, they won't be uh, your. You might get to your heart rate max higher, but with the VO2, you won't uh, max. You won't be there um, as long as you would be with the five. Um, sorry, the one mile rep. So there, you would you would see from there 
um, the benefits because the longer you run, the longer you can sustain, but also the 400 meters will make you go faster if you run at a faster speed. So a typical structure, yeah, um, there's so many different ways you can do this. You could do um, 10, depending on your ability, you can do 10 400 meter reps with um, 60 to 90 seconds recovery between them. Now, the key with any interval session is that you want to make sure that you're either maintaining the pace or you want to get faster as you go along and um, you don't want to be the last couple or the last like four really, although you'll be really struggling, you don't want the pace, you don't want the pace to, to drop quite a lot. Now, you don't want to, what you don't want to do is go off really hard on the first one and then just suffer for the rest of the session. So build into any sort of session. So going back to what kind of, um, what, what you can do session. So there is the 10 that I said, so you can have a mile warm up, mile cool down, and then 10 straight flat um, 400s with 60 seconds recovery, or you can do it a different way. You could do four to six um, for a set and do two sets and then um, 60 seconds recovery between the reps and then between the set, you could have um, uh, three minutes recovery. So that's another way you can do it. And you can mi mix and match it. Now, uh, we do those sort of sessions. Um, depends what you want to get out of sessions. Uh, I would normally do um, really hard, so 5K pace or faster. So um, you might take a few um, reps to, to work out your pace if you're not used to that. But I, I, would, I would go 5K pace or faster. Um, and that's the way I'll train for, there, for that session. Now, another good session is fartlek. Now, fartlek has so many different um, versions of it. And it could be simple from the fact that you um, could be running from lamppost to lamppost, uh, running as fast as you can to a certain lamppost, then then um, going around uh, uh, going around a few other lampposts before you go to another one and go hard. hard. So it's very random. It um, sometimes it's not meant to have a structure, but sometimes you do have a structure a little bit. And it's, um, I think, it, I believe it comes from Sweden and it's basically called for speed play. Um, that's what it's called. Um, so with that, you can just go out, say, for an hour run or 30 minute run. And then you can say, oh, I see a lamppost about 400 metres away. Um, when I get to that, I'll sprint to the next lamppost. So it's completely random whenever you want. And um, it could be like just surges of speed whenever, now and again. And it's good. It's a good session. So that's one session I like to do. Um, a threshold session is another great session that I like to do. And um, there's so many different types you can do. You've got to find your threshold first. So threshold could be um, uh, between 5 and 10k pace roughly. Um, whatever you think is best for you but you don't want to go faster than 5k pace so ideally I go about 10k pace because that's where really you want to be um threshold you could be doing like 10 minutes easy running 10 minutes threshold running 10 minutes easy running 10 minutes threshold running and then 10 minutes easy again so you, you can do things like that or five minutes threshold running 10 minutes easy uh five minutes threshold running so it's stuff like that and that and that will get your um build up the endurance um you'll be able to maintain the pace obviously and um you'll be able to um you'll just you'll just you'll be able to maintain the pace and it'll build your endurance as well now um let's go with some uh, a shorter session to wrap up things a uh, what i would i love as well and this course is 200 meter and 100 meter reps now what why do you need to do that for a long distance runner well the importance is again cadence um, you get that heart rate going of course um, but you're making that cadence go fast um, you're turning over quicker and you're running faster as well which will therefore improve you in the long run now um, you can do 200 meters, so it's easy. Um, things like that. you can do like six times 200 meters with 200 meter recovery, and then 200 meter uh, jog recover. Uh, sorry, 200 jog recovery, and then you can have three minutes between the sets or two minutes, whatever you feel comfortable, and then repeat again and do another six. There's loads of different ways you can do the 200s. Um, you you can do like straight 10 200s with. Uh, 35 seconds recovery so you can play around the recovery but please bear in mind that 
any sort of interval session, the recovery is key. Now, with the recovery, you need to make sure that you um, take the recovery. Now, if it's warm enough and you're not getting too cold, you can have a brisk walk, but ideally a active light jog. So a light jog is basically trotting along slower than you would run your easy runs and really you need that heart rate to come all the way back down so then you can target the heart um, the the rep again and you should be able ideally to maintain the pace or go faster now this big mistake that people do with their recoveries is they rush them or they go too fast and, it, and it's a lot of people that do this and therefore you won't improve. Um, you're turning your run into like um, a different sort of run and it could be a tempo run, but then you also fall into like the overtraining trap. So you ideally want to get that heart rate all the way down. So the slower the better on the recovery and then you can target the, the sessions really hard. So I hope this was interesting. Um, please leave some comments. This is some of my go-to sessions and um, I just wanted to, um, just give you an insight of some of the sessions that I like doing. Um, leave a comment, what sessions do you like doing? And um, please like the video, and thanks again, guys. And the uh, champions of the uh, this age group category, Henrietta Tarasevic, Emilianis Christodoulou, Pinchibis Christodoulou.